All of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I want to talk to you today about video game immersion. Now video game immersion is something that all developers and publishers aspire to achieve, for if they do they've got you right in the palm of their hands, locked into their games and its various gameplay loops for potentially hours at a time. The real world can drip away as you set about your adventures and if they do their job right it won't be an arduous grind but a joy from start to finish. And what better way to reward a player for doing this than with a lovely platinum or full completion trophy for that 100%, right? It's kind of like a firm handshake from the devs saying, well done and thank you very much. However, these games that are on this list, well, they're less of a firm grip and a shake and more of a tearing off your own arms and spitting in your face for what they asked the player to do in order to fully complete them. The games on this list took no prisoners, and if you were attempting to 100% them, then you too might need to be locked up as well. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 insane demands that games made to 100% them. Number 10, Red Dead Redemption 2 Hunting Requests. I love Red Dead Redemption 2. It is a perfect representation of the American frontier with an incredible story full of gut-wrenching moments. But should you ever state to yourself after looking around and surveying the world and saying, yeah, this is all right and saying, I'm going to 100% this, then if you listen closely, you might hear Rockstar laughing in the distance. And of this mountain of activities to tick off in order to get 100%, the hunting requests are by far the worst. Because while they start off easy, they escalate to ridiculous levels. The hardest of these hunting requests are the bird carcasses you need to retrieve. Not only are they microscopic in scale, but they also need to be preferably at a three-star rating. And while this might not seem fundamentally too difficult, you also are required to get a clean kill, which requires precise control over your slow motion ability Deadeye. Finding these feathered foes is hard enough, but then to have it all boiled down to a game of duck hunt, oh, that was too rich for my blood, mate. Number 9. Gears of War Seriously A lot has been said of this series of achievements in the Gears of War franchise, and here are a few more. Are you f***ing kidding me? Of all of these ridiculous requirements, the original Seriously in Gears of War 1 has to take the cake, as it was the one that kickstarted it all, and for many, it's the single downfall to their 100% run. For this Cheeve, players were tasked with getting 10,000 kills in ranked matches, and yes, that's ranked matches, meaning that you're playing against some of the best of the best, and you need to take down 10,000 of them. With each match averaging at around 10 kills, this is a lot of matches and matchmaking to engage engage with. So not only is it an insane task to ask players to do, but it will also rack up a massive amount of time. Good luck guys. Number 8. Celeste Strawberries Celeste is an absolute masterpiece that is pretty much all agreed upon, right? And its unique take on mental health sees brutal difficulty being used to portray your protagonist fighting her literal inner demons. It's a game that combines a brilliant story with brutal gameplay, and while it's utterly satisfying to see this through to completion, the strawberries of this game, well they can get in the bin. Throughout this title, numerous strawberries are placed as collectibles, always taunting you in hard to reach places to test your might to gather them. But it's not just about getting the berries, you also have to land on solid ground to actually register as having collected them. And things get much worse when the gold strawberries arrive upon selecting a higher difficulty as these force you to move quickly and with pinpoint accuracy if you're to stand a chance at bagging them. In short, to say that these were not the strawberry on top of this experience is quite the understatement. Number 7. The Elder Scrolls Online Emperor I'm sorry, do you want to run that past me again? I need to do what to unlock this? Yes, that's right, in order to be the top todger in Tamriel, you have to become the literal emperor of the game. And yes, if that sounds difficult, it's because it is. First of all, your alliance needs to capture and keep all six keeps around the Imperial City, which is no easy feat in itself. And then, and then, my dear sweet rolls, you have to make sure that you are the highest ranking member of your alliance at the time. That is right, the top of the top. Now clearly this is a huge ask for any player as it will require a ton of hours and grinding to even threaten the current emperor and you'll have to do this while all others in your group are trying to do the exact same. I hope that you didn't like sleeping because being emperor, well that's a full time job. Number 6. Persona 5. Maxing out everything. 
Persona 5 is a beautiful game that is as ridiculously detailed as it is ridiculously long. Seriously, an average run of this game will take you around 100 hours, and thanks to Persona 5 Royal, it's even longer now. But it's never time wasted as you're building bonds, going on dates, and of course solving all manner of interesting Persona-based problems along the way. However, in order to get 100%, you'll need to max out everything. Every social link, every side quest, every single optional activity, and this, well my god it takes a while. It is possible to do this in one playthrough, but it's so challenging to do and you will kick yourself if you miss just one thing and have to come back around, costing you another 80 hours or so to get back to the point that you messed it up. In short, this is for the hardcore of hardcore fans, so don't even bother unless you have literal weeks of real time to invest in it. Number 5. Super Mario Odyssey The Skipping Rope Challenge Who doesn't love Mario? I mean, he's a gaming icon and all-around good guy, so I mean, what's not to like? Well, apparently, the people who run and designed this skipping rope challenge in Super Mario Odyssey absolutely hate him because this is harder than every lava-filled lair that Bowser has ever lived in combined. The first time you partake in this challenge, you need to get 30 successful jumps in a row. It's not stupidly hard, but it is a bit of a faff. Yet, this is but the warm up to the horror show that is the next milestone which will require you to get 100 jumps in a row. To put it bluntly, this is the hardest challenge in the game and may well be the one moon that will taunt you for absolutely ages. Now that's not to say it can't be beaten with a glitch or some extreme patience, but the fact it asks you to do this in the first place… Number 4. Fable 2 The Doll Catcher when Fable 2 hit the Xbox 360, millions of players dived into the fantasy world that they'd waited years to return to. It embraces a very English culture and the folklore that comes with it, and the achievement list that accompanied Fable 2 was also incredibly fun to actually go through, making the quest for 100% an immensely fun task. However, there was just one achievement that completely ruined the rhythm of the game. The Doll Catcher achievement tasked players to find six unique dolls. Now, two can be easily obtained from an in-game shooter shooting gallery and bought from shops, but the other four, however, well that's a different story. To obtain the other four, you'd have to essentially scour online in the depths of Fable 2's black markets to find other players who have the dolls and are willing to trade. You see, one doll was randomised for every game that they're in, meaning that players would have to trade amongst themselves to gather the full list. It was an incredibly infuriating task and stood out as quite the sore thumb in an otherwise incredibly fun game to gather the full 100% with. Such a shame. Number 3. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Korok Seeds now, one of the main draws to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the sheer amount of experimentation and exploration at play, and the Korok Seeds are just such an item that rewards you for looking under every stone and diving into every bush, Uwa Vicar. However, once you start to realise that they are literally everywhere, you suddenly realise, oh crap, they are literally everywhere, and as such, collecting them becomes a mammoth undertaking. You might not even twig this until you're a couple hundred seeds deep, but there are 900 hundred of them to collect, and suddenly the game changes from being a near-perfect exploration and adventure title, and instead is now just a crazed collectathon that will drain your very essence as you scour through every area over and over. It is a huge ask of the player, and the reward you get for doing it, well it's a literal giant piece of golden shit. Cheers. Number 2. GTA 4 Pigeons GTA 4 was a beautiful game, toning down the silly to instead tell a complex and dark narrative against a horribly gritty city. However, while it was easy to spend hour upon hour in the game, getting that 100%, well that was anything but. The checklist to complete the game to 100% had quite a few annoying tasks. Tricky stunt jumps and tracking down every random encounter were among a few of them, but this was nothing compared to those bloody pigeons. Now, GTA 4's collectibles consisted of killing those flying rats, 200 of them in fact, and you either needed to use an in-game website to see where they all were, or an incredibly comprehensive guide to find them all. And I mean, I suppose you could try and find them all naturally, but it would be enough to break your soul, seeing as they barely stood out at all. You do get a nice helicopter at the end of it, I guess, but the real kick in the teeth was the fact that this only counted towards 2.5% of the overall completion. For all of that effort, never again. And number 1. Mortal Kombat 10 Milestones 
There's nothing more satisfying than securing a win with a Mortal Kombat fatality. Seeing you punch your way through your enemy's chest, rip out their heart and use them as a puppet, well, it's highly gratifying. At least it is the first 100 or so times, and you will see these far more than this if you want to complete the game's milestones. For example, gaining mastery with all fighters is needed to be able to gain bragging rights and earn the achievement to showcase like a proud medal on your hairy chest. And for this, you'll need 100 wins, 100 fatalities, 150 x-ray hits, spill 10,000 pints of blood, and play as the character for 24 hours. And yes, 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 this is with every character. I just cannot fathom how long this would take to do such a thing. Oh look, somebody already has figured it out, and it was 672 hours of game time on average, which equals to around 28 full days. So I just want to ask, right here, between you and me, has anyone actually got this? If you are one of these people, then my lord, good on you, but also, bruh. And there we go, those were 10 insane demands that games made to 100% them. I hope you enjoyed that, my friends, and please let me know what other ridiculous challenges games have put you through down in the comments section below, as I'd love to return to this into a commenters edition further down the line. If you want to chat to me further, then please go over to Twitter and go to at RetroJ with a zero and follow your big bold bad boy here. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.